Hey there weavers, welcome back. Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving here. And today we're going to start weaving the false satin damask pickup that I spoke of in my previous video. So this is the little dog that we're going to weave a picture of. Uh, that's gonna be on, if I do the bag, that'll be on one side of the bag. And then the other side will be uh, the name of the coffee shop that my friend owns. And I'll probably weave this one upside down. So I'll weave them like this and then I can fold it and, well, let's see. I should probably weave it like this. Then I can fold it like this, have one side of the bag have that, the other side of the bag that way. The other cool part about this weave structure is it's double-sided. So we've got the cats on this side in the white and brown, and then on the other side, they're reversed and it's brown and white. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to make this bag so that it can be double-sided too. You can flip it inside out. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I've got the warp on the loom and we're gonna go ahead and start weaving. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you do, um, please consider subscribing to see my future videos. Let's get started. All right, I am all set up here uh, to start the actual weaving. You can see that I have put my header in to spread my warp and um, I lashed on. Uh, this has been a game changer for me. I've tried lashing on in the past and it just hasn't worked for me, but um, recently I saw another video about lashing on and it just kind of clicked with me. So I've been lashing on and it's work, working out great. I put in the first 32 picks and this is the hem allowance and this is the weft face satin, false satin damask. And now I'm getting ready to do the uh, border, which is a warp-faced false satin damask. But before I start in with the weaving, I wanted to show you a few little things. The method that Sarah Jackson has in her video and in the instructions that I received are to use the to use piano wire as your pickup stick. Um, and the cool thing about doing it this way is you put, you pick the threads up that you want to raise and for your pattern. And then you leave one of these in for a couple different picks. And you've got two of them because First, you're picking up the upper threads of the pattern, and then you pick up the lower threads of the pattern. And you'll it'll start making sense once I start doing it. But the key to this method is that this is warped at um, 24 ends per inch, and it's warped in multiples of four. So each dent has four threads in it. And this helps you keep track better of what threads need to be picked up um, because you're going to pick up by dent. So in the first pickup, you'll pick up the first two threads in the dent. And then on the second pickup, you pick up the other two threads in the dent. So it really makes it a lot easier to uh, keep the pattern straight. 
one of the things that I found to be critical is to be able to see my shed, um, see through my shed, because this warp is is packed in pretty tight. And if there is a, a thread that catches um, and you don't know that, then you're going to have a serious issue. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod real quick so that I can show you my little hack. So this right here is a little camera and it's for looking inside small spaces and it's got a big long cord on it and it that is a USB cord and it goes over to my laptop here and I've got this set up so that it is looking straight down where my shed will open so it's looking down my my reed and you can see my finger here you can see the reed is right here this is my unopened shed so when I open a shed you can see so you can see my open shed so here's my floating salvage and you can see the other floating salvage on the other end here now, if there is a thread that is caught, you're going to be able to see it. So when I change shed, I'm going to glance over to my left at my laptop sitting there and make sure my shed is clear. Now, if you don't have a little camera like this, um, you actually can buy them on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. Um, but, uh, they're relatively inexpensive. Um, I think they're 10 or $12, but it has really been a, a lifesaver in doing something like this, where you have a, uh, a shed that is fairly dense. So we'll go ahead and start with the weaving and the first, um, section that I'm going to do is the um, the work faced the mask and basically it's going to be the reverse of this right here so what I'm doing is I'm lifting three of the four threads in each um, dent. All right. So now we're going to start in on the actual pickup pattern. I've got my pattern laid out here and it is a uh, it's graphed out and the first thing I'm going to be doing are some little bones across the bottom. And I'm using this highlighter tape that I got at Amazon uh, to kind of mark where I'm working. And the first pickup line is really the most critical one and it's the most um, one that you really have to count. So I'm going to be using a pickup stick for this first one. I'm going to press treadle five. That's going to lift every other thread in each dent. There's four threads in each dent in my reed, and this is going to lift um, two of those threads. So I'm going to pick up uh, what is shown on my graph here of I'm going to skip 10 dents and then I'm going to pick up two dents. Now I say dents because I'm not picking up threads, I'm picking up dents. There are two threads that I'm going to pick up for each dent. So I'm going to first skip the first 10. So two, four, six, eight, 
pen. And then I'm going to pick up two. Then I'm going to skip nine. Um, so I've got two, four, six, eight, nine, and then pick up two. I'm going to repeat that pattern. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Pick up two, skip nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Now I should have ten left here on the end. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. All right. I'm going to let my treadle down and I'm going to take my pickup stick and put it up on end. And that's just going to make it easier for me to put my pickup uh, wire in the shed that I've created with the pickup stick. So this is about 31 inches long and it's a piano wire that I've cut to length and then put the blue painter's tape on the end. Uh, that's because for two reasons. The piano wire is extremely sharp and will cut you very easily. And it allows me to use the end of the wire as a pickup device. So I'm just going to thread this through here Make sure I've got them all. And now I can take my pickup stick out. My first um, treadle after this is going to be um, treadle one. I'm sorry. I'm going to push the pickup wire to the uh, reed. And then I'm going to press treadle one. That will raise all of the threads for treadle one and the threads that I just picked up. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw a pick. And the, now you'll notice that I have my uh, wire still in there and I'm going to leave it in there. So because the wire is so thin, I was able to beat that and still have it beat in pretty well. I need to tighten up my beater bar. There we go. Now I'm going to press pedal six. And I'm going to take my second pickup wire and I am going to use the first pickup wire to guide me as to which threads I pick up. So originally I picked up the two threads that end up being on the inside. Now I'm going to pick up the two threads in each of those dents that corresponds with the two threads in those two dents that I picked up before. So there's four threads in each dent. I picked up two in the first pickup. Now I'm picking up the second two. Make sure you don't get a neighboring thread. I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to just double check and make sure I didn't pick up any stray threads like right here I did okay 
So right here, I can see I picked up an extra, or did I? No, I, I'm okay there. So the other way you can double check is to go up to the reed, and if you've only got threads in the two dents, or in the dents that are appropriate, then you're good. So we'll go ahead and let the treadle down and we can remove that first um, wire. Now we're going to take the second wire that we just put in, we're going to put it up by the reed and we're going to treadle, treadle three. And then we can go ahead and throw our pick. It helps to have a fairly narrow shuttle because this shed can get pretty narrow. All right. Now I go ahead and beat that and I'm going to take without Removing this, I'm going to put it back up to the beater and I'm going to treadle, treadle two, and throw my third pick. then we will be at it. Now I'm going to treadle five again and I am going to put the other wire back in where we had it originally with those two threads in each dent take number two out, hold this up by the uh, reed, and then I am going to settle number four. And push that through. And then beat. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And I'm going to give it a couple of good beats just to make sure everything is set. Then we can start on our second row. So I'm just going to continue on here and you can watch as I weave along. progressed a ways with my pickup and you can start seeing the paws of the dog and I thought it might be helpful to give you 
the view that I have when I am doing this. So here's my cartoon. I've marked the pickup row that I'm working on and I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick this up. So I raise shaft, or I'm sorry, I raise treadle 5 and hopefully I can do this without bumping the camera too much. So I'm going to pick up these three here and then move over and pick up three here. Oh, my cat wants in. And then these two. <laughs> Why do cats always know when you don't want them in a room? I don't know. Those two, and then these two. All right, so now I have my pickup, and let's see if I can zoom out so that you can see the reed. So my reed is up here, and I'm going to let down on that turtle, and then I'm going to treadle. Treadle one. Now the the wire can kind of flop around, um, and then you're gonna feed the shuttle through. And then we're going to beat that in, including the wire. Then I'm going to press on treadle six. And when I do that, I'll zoom back in here so that you can kind of see this. You can see where the original wire is. So I'm going to pick up the other two threads that I didn't pick up before that are in each of those depths. Sometimes these are hard to see. And because I've got the wire in there, I don't need to consult my cartoon anymore. Um, so then I pull them down and I double check and make sure that I've got the two threads that correspond with the wires, the ones that are already picked up on the wire. Then I let my treadle down. This is the original wire. I'm going to take that one out. Now I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to press on pedal three. And then I push it back, and in fact I can move that, and I push this up back to the reed, and I press on treadle 2. And 
and it's a very narrow shed because of that uh, pickup wire in there. So I don't really throw it, I just push it through. All right. Now we're going to press on pedal five again. And we have to do the corresponding um, treadle for treadle one that we did originally. So I'm going to pick up these again. And I pull them down. So if I go in really close here, you can see how those are each one. Oh, and see, I missed one right here. That's why you check. Perfect. Okay. Now I believe I'm good. Alright. So that's the good one. I can take this one out. And then... Push that up to the reed. And pedal four. And push my shuttle through. Okay. And there we've got one more set down. We beat it in so that, uh, because you don't really beat very hard on the, on the, each individual pick, kind of have to beat it in and once it's wet finished, it will, it will even out even more. So I thought that that would be helpful to see that from the bird's eye view that I see when I'm waving it. So I'm just going to continue on and when I get it all done, I will show it to you. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video of this pickup technique. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider liking and subscribing to my channel so that you get notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.
Okay, weavers, we are finally done with the false satin damask pickup. As you can see, um, I ended up turning it into a bag. Uh, the project ended up being quite a bit longer than I had anticipated, but uh, after I had washed it and um, it shrunk about 20%, uh, it still needed to be shortened, I thought. Um, it was probably about 26 inches long, and so I ended up cutting off a lot of the hem allowance and the borders and the uh, little dog bones that I had <laughs> woven down at the bottom. I cut all that off and I just created the bag uh, without any of that in it. And as you can see, I boxed the corners on the bottom of the bag to give it some shape. And I used what I had cut off uh, to create the handles. Um, so at least I didn't waste that. And then there's a nice uh, large lip around or hem around the top. And then the other side is uh, the name of the cop of my friend's coffee shop. So I hope you enjoyed watching me weave this project. I sure enjoyed doing it. If you would like to give me a thumbs up, that would be great. And consider subscribing to my channel so that you get notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.